Hey, this is Dr. Barry. For the next few minutes, let's discuss the topic of does the keto diet cause AFib or atrial fibrillation? Now, this is a very serious matter. This is no joking matter whatsoever. People who have AFib or who are at risk for AFib need to understand what actually causes AFib what's associated with AFib, and what probably doesn't cause AFib. And so that's what this video is about. And I promise you're going to watch, want to watch this video to the very end, because at the end, I'm going to tell you about an association that you might be surprised about. Okay, so let's get into this. So first of all, atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is a very serious superventricular tachycardia. That means it's a, it's a very fast, irregular heartbeat that originates from the upper part of the heart, not the ventricles, but the atria. And about 200,000 people are diagnosed with AFib every year in the United States. And the reason we care about AFib is because this irregular heartbeat can lead to clot formation and can lead to strokes. It increases your risk of strokes many times over. And so it's a very serious condition to have. Uh, AFib gets much more common as you get older. And so if you're an 80-year-old, it's much more common to have AFib than if you're a 60-year-old or a 40-year-old. And so there are many things that, that can cause AFib and many things that are associated with AFib that we don't know if it causes AFib or not, but it's at least associated. And then uh, other things we'll talk about towards the end. So this is one of the reasons that I recommend that everybody over the age of 40 have an EKG or an ECG every year when you go for your annual checkup, because sometimes you can have symptoms with AFib. You can have palpitations or feel your heart beating irregularly. You can have shortness of breath. You can have dizziness or vertigo, but the majority of people have no symptoms whatsoever. Uh, AFib is just picked up on an EKG that's done. And so starting about at the age of 40, everybody needs an EKG just to make sure that you don't have silent AFib or some other arrhythmia that hasn't been diagnosed. So now let's talk about what we know for a fact actually causes atrial fibrillation. And this part's going to be a little boring, but I promise towards the end we're going to pick up and talk about some stuff. So the actual causes that we know of are if you've had a previous heart attack or if you have known heart disease, coronary artery disease, or ischemia, those increase your risk of having AFib. If you have an infection or an inflammation of the outer lining of the heart, of the heart muscle, or the inner lining of the heart, those can all lead to AFib. If you have congestive heart failure, that can increase your risk. If you've ever had a, cat, a heart cath, that can increase your risk just from being instrumented. If you've ever had a device implanted in your in your heart or in your chest, that can increase the risk. Any surgery really on the chest or the heart definitely can increase your risk of having a fib. If you have an atrial septal defect, which is a birth defect that sometimes is not caught when you're younger, that can increase your risk. If you've ever had cardiomyopathy, that can increase your risk. If you have any kind of heart valve disease, that can increase your risk. If you have cardiomegaly or an enlarged heart, that increases your risk of AFib. Uh, collagen vascular disease, there's a whole list of drugs, both illegal and prescription, that can lead to AFib. We might talk about that in another uh, video. Any electrolyte abnormality, if you have a magnesium deficiency or a potassium deficiency, these can lead to AFib. If you have hypothermia, if you fell in the lake, lake and stayed for 20 minutes before they fished you out, that can increase your risk of AFib. If you have COPD or emphysema, if you've ever had a severe pneumonia in your life, if you've ever had a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot in your heart, that can increase your risk. Uh, if you have obstructive sleep apnea, that can increase your risk of having atrial fibrillation. And then uh, also hyper thyroidism, not hypo, but hyper or overactive thyroid can lead to AFib. Now, here's some things that are just associated with atrial fibrillation. We know that they're, they're, they're highly correlated, but we don't know if this causes AFib or not. You see how I teased out what actually we know causes and what we just think maybe causes? Point for later. Okay, so diabetes is highly associated with AFib hypertension, highly associated, smoking, highly associated, and alcohol abuse, highly associated. Now, we don't know yet. We don't have enough research to say that they cause AFib, but they're certainly very highly uh, correlated with 
atrial fibrillation. Now let's talk about this study that you may have read a news report about or maybe even saw a television doctor talking about. So this study, which was uh, the lead author is a Chinese cardiologist, and the study is has not been published in any journal. The study hasn't even yet been peer-reviewed. And so the way this would normally work is you would write up a study about something and you would send it off to a few of your peers, other cardiologists, and they would read over your work to make sure it made sense, to make sure there were no glaring errors. That's peer review. That's what that is. And then if it passed peer review, then you would get it published in a in a scientific or medical journal. This paper hasn't been peer reviewed. This paper has not been published anywhere. It's uh, as, as of the making date of this video. Now, I'm sure it will be published, but it hasn't been yet. So my point is, there could be glaring, glaring errors in this study that just haven't been caught by peer review yet. So, but yet the media has already picked up on this story and is running with it, and that's completely and totally inappropriate. The science editor of any magazine or journal or television uh, station should absolutely know. You don't talk about studies that haven't been peer-reviewed because it, they could literally be full of made-up crap. You don't know anything about the study because it hasn't been reviewed by peers of the author. Also, uh, when, a, when a study gets published, that tends to make it more reliable. But as we know, it's not always. But, that, but uh, uh, before you even talk about a study, it needs to be peer reviewed and published in a reputable journal. This study has been neither yet. So this was based on data collected from 1985 to 2016. That's right. This is not there's no data in this study from 2017, 2017, 18 or 19. This study, the, the data collection stopped in 2016. So, you know, keto wasn't that big of a thing back in 2016. So uh, and this is the ARIC data. That, and so that study t stopped in 2016. Now, that's the first problem. The second problem is, is this is a food frequency questionnaire. They sent out questionnaires with 66 questions on them and asked people questions like, how many blueberries have you eaten in the last 12 months? Could you answer that? And it's a multiple choice. You have to pick one of the choices. And there is no choice that says, hell, I don't remember. So and then also uh, there's questions like, how many cups have of, of ribs have you eaten in the last year? I, I don't measure ribs in cups, but those are the kind of questions that these people were asked. And so then based on what they collected from these weird, inappropriate questions back in 2016 or before, they published this study and they broke the participants up into three groups. They call one group low carb and the other uh, uh, medium carb and then high carb. The low carb group was anybody who ate under 45% of their total calories a day. They call that low carb. Now, anybody who's eaten low carb or keto, you know that's not even close to low carb. Uh, if you're eating, getting 45% of your carbs daily from, or your calories daily from carbohydrates, you're eating more than 200 grams of carbohydrates every day. That's not even close to low carb. Right. Most people on low carb are eating 50 grams or less or even 20 grams or less a day. So nobody who's low carb or keto would consider these people low carb. We would all call them high carb people. They're eating way too many carbohydrates. So it doesn't surprise me at all that their risk of AFib is increased. So uh, this is an so this is an observational study. It can only so show association. And so basically the three groups, in my opinion, were high carb, higher carb, and oh my God, that's a lot of carbs. That was the three groups. And they showed that the, the high carb group had more AFib than the higher carb or the OMG carb. Not really a big deal, really. And then add to that the, the fact that the study has not been peer reviewed. It's not been published. So why is news media talking about this? I find this rather odd. And now we're going to get to the good part. I hope you waited for this. So why is media talking about a study that basically hasn't even been reviewed yet? Nobody's even looked at it to see if, the, I mean, the guy may have made up all his numbers. Who even knows? Nobody knows. But yet the news media is running with this because keto is so popular. And they know that if they say, fill in the blank, if you eat keto, you're going to get fill in the blank. Keto will kill you. If they publish any study, any, any headline like that, everybody's going to watch it because keto is very popular. Now, here's the part I'm very disappointed 
about. There's a television doctor who you might know uh, who also had a news story about this. Now, he's a he's a board certified cardiologist. Uh, he ought to know better than this. He ought to know that this study was not ready to be talked about, but he couldn't resist. And I think he couldn't resist for two reasons. Reason number one is keto's hot. If he talks about keto in a bad way, he's going to get a ton of views on his channel. Reason two is very odd. You see, the the his television show is produced by a company, Harpo. You may have heard of Harpo. Does that ring a bell? That company's owned by Oprah, and Oprah owns 10% or, or less or more, about 10% of of uh, Weight Watcher stock. So let's let's so Weight Watcher stock is plummeting. Oprah owns a lot of Weight Watcher stock. Oprah also owns Harpo Productions. Harpo Productions co-produces this doctor who we won't name on television. Oprah actually discovered this doctor whom we won't name. Uh, so do you see how the if you just follow the money trail there, you may see why this this doctor who should know better somehow chose to talk about this study, even though it's not even close to being ready to be talked about by a reputable doctor. So I think that pretty much covers this. So the take home message is, is this study in no way shows that eating low carb increases your risk of atrial fibrillation. It might show an association between, between eating over 200 grams of carbs a day and atrial fib. It might show that, but we don't know because it hasn't been peer reviewed nor has it been published. And it's an observational study, so you cannot prove causation from this study at all. So there's a long list of things wrong with this study. So I think this study is meaningless. And I think that the, the science editors who allowed this story to be talked about on their news channel should be ashamed. And I think the doctor on television, who's, a, who's an MD, should be doubly ashamed. That's all I have to say about that. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button because I'll be back soon with another one and you don't want to miss it. If you really don't want to miss it, click that little bell right beside the subscribe button. Now, as you can tell from the contents of this video, I will never be sponsored by Big Pharma or Big Food or Oprah. And so if you'd like to help me have more time to make more videos just like this, you can click on my Patreon link. It's right down below. It's a quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way to help me have more time to make more videos just like this. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.